Today, I'm going to be playing Project Zomboid. However, I'm going to be role playing as myself. Here are my stats, and you can pause to read all of them. We start on day four of the Nox outbreak. News broadcasts tells us to quarantine ourselves as to not contract the virus, so that's what I did. I stockpiled food for a few days before the outbreak, with as little money as I could as I don't have a stable financial income. The only food I had left was inside my fridge. I only had bologna and a bottle of orange soda for breakfast. Better that than nothing. I took out the bologna and soda. It was sad enough I couldn't even make a sandwich with it. Might as well heat it up. Headed out with the intention to get food from the convenience store, which wasn't too far from where I lived. I was walking down the street of my neighborhood when I see someone in my peripherals. I'm not a very social person, so I avoid looking in their direction and keep moving forward. I then see a big group of people, hearing their snarling and growls send me in a sprint. The adrenaline shooting up my veins, I put distance between me and them and turned around. I don't know if my eyes were deceiving me or not, but seeing them shamble and limp towards me made me think that there were walking corpses. People around me who I once seen around town walking towards me in a manner that doesn't seem human. Looking into their eyes, there was nothing. No emotion that I could recognize. There had to be at least 20 of them on my tail. I had to lose them. I swiftly made my way behind a tree line to cut off line of sight. I saw one come out of the trees, and I knew it was either him or me. I started stomping as hard as I could on his chest. Each time my foot made an impact, I heard a disgusting squish and crack. I knew all of his breaking bones, until finally the most horrifying sound emitted from the thing I stomped to death. I then heard two coming up from my left and right. I hopped the fence to make distance. They both followed in pursuit. The one closest to me swiped at me. I was taken off guard and stumbled. When I got my balance, I ran in a panic. I cut through the trees to try and make it back home. They were everywhere. Everywhere I turned and looked, it seemed like they were always one step closer than the last. I spotted my house and quickly made it inside. I left for a weapon in my kitchen cabinets and got a hold of a meat cleaver. My heart, still pounding in disbelief. Whatever this virus is, it's turning its host into a drone, wanting to infect anyone who comes in contact with the virus. I heard them slamming themselves against one of my windows. They would soon get in. I knew my home wasn't safe anymore. I ran out the door. I was like a fish inside a shark's den. I was out in the open with a lot of those creatures. I caught on pretty quick that if I could keep a quick pace, I wouldn't have to exert myself running. It was obvious I couldn't fight them all, so I'd have to once again lose line of sight and avoid combat, as I was already feeling winded trying to lose the last horde. I started making my way behind and wrapping around the white house. I went inside and tried hiding.
And there was a shambler who started slamming themselves on the back door of the house. It was no use. I had to run. It seemed like I finally lost the horde. There was just a few stragglers that needed to be taken care of. to take inventory. I noticed that one of the people I took out had a hand axe lodged within their back, a weapon to use for later. The sounds of me lodging my cleaver into the skull still get to me. What was causing this madness? I had to know. My plan now is to head to the police station. Maybe there's still people hold up with supplies to hold out for days. I knew that I was going to have to find shelter as getting to the police station with this many freaks around is going to take at least a few days. I spotted a trailer home above mine. There weren't many of those things around so I could make my way inside without too much trouble I hoped. When I went inside, I sat down on the floor. I faced the doors. I didn't want anyone sneaking up on me as I rested. I slowly went up to the bedroom and scavenged what I could find. I searched the closet and checked the right cabinet first. I found clothes, but I found two military ponchos. Whoever was in here was military. In the left cabinet, I found some military cargo pants and what looked to be a long briefcase and a bandana. This was a virus outbreak, so assuming I didn't have it already, I wore it to protect my face from those who were already infected. And the briefcase, well, it wasn't a briefcase at all. It was a gun case. I had a surge of adrenaline at the sight of a double barrel shotgun with a box of buckshot shells next to it. But I had to be smart with it. Shooting a gun isn't exactly quiet, so I had to be absolutely certain when I decided to shoot the gun or not. I searched the rest of the house. However, there was nothing else of use, so I left. Up the road, I spotted a car next to another trailer home, so I went and investigated. It was locked. A minor inconvenience, but that was okay as I had bigger problems to attend to. More of them infected I had to kill. on them. 
I gladly took it to keep track of time. I went inside to see what useful items I could take with me. Not before long, some more uninvited guests seemed to come. Out in the distance, I spotted a building. I needed a place to rest once again, as I am not the most fit human being in the world. It'd be worth the stop if it had supplies also. I cleared the front without hassle and sat down in the chair to rest up. Hi everyone, that's going to be it for part one right now. Part two is already in the works and should be out by tomorrow. So thank you for watching the video and goodbye.